V-Ray 2.0 for 3DS Max Course Overview This course has been created to provide a solid understanding of the tools, concepts and workflows you will use on a daily basis when producing professional quality work using the V-Ray rendering system. Carefully staged to allow a thorough understanding of the processes V-Ray uses to generate an image, we begin simply working gradually through the various features of V-Ray, sometimes in isolation, sometimes combined, using simple test scenes and generally fast render times. Once we have covered these tools, we finish with three example case studies of full studio level projects, where we will put what we have learnt into practice and cover the methods used to optimise and troubleshoot large, complex projects. We will start with a tour of the interface, so you have an idea where various features are located in relation to each other before introducing the cornerstone of the V-Ray rendering system, the various advanced lighting engines. These will initially be covered at a sufficient level to allow most project types to be approached. Once we have the ability to produce a nicely lit scene, we then proceed to the V-Ray material system and how to texture your models. In this section, we cover all of the major V-Ray material types and look at reflection, refraction and transmission of light, along with more specialized material effects such as dirt mapping, dispersion, subsurface scattering, and even ray-traced Boolean effects. We will also look at ways that the V-Ray material and object properties can be used to change the render time behavior of a scene geometry. After covering the material and texturing options available to us, we move on to some of V-Ray's specialist geometry types, covering displacement, fur, and the endlessly useful V-Ray proxy object. Using these, you will be easily able to increase the complexity and detail in your scenes to an impressive level. We then move on to cover the various environmental effects that V-Ray provides, covering caustics, volumetric fog, tune rendering, and lens effects. With these tools, it's possible to add a great deal of realism or an extremely stylized look to your productions. At this point, we have most of the tools necessary to produce a good image or animation and are hopefully quite comfortable moving around the V-Ray interface. We will then dive deeper into the technical aspects of V-Ray's unified DMC sampler system and look at how we can use the tools available to balance render quality against speed and learn the various setups to deal with the different rendering situations. We may have covered all the tools necessary to produce great images and animations, but to really appreciate the power of V-Ray, it's necessary to go a step further and use the tools we have tested together to produce compelling work. This will be achieved through three case studies designed to reflect the level of detail and quality necessary for a demanding client. They differ somewhat from real production jobs in that they are also a demonstration of what can be achieved using V-Ray alone. Professional production work would likely rely more heavily on post-production. As a result, these sections also feature some longer render times, but all final images and animations are included with the courseware, should you not be inclined to wait for the renders. The first case study is a high-resolution interior still image and features more advanced use of the V-Ray material, attention to detail in the use of maps, aging of a scene using V-Ray dirt, and a focus on clean rendering in a difficult scene. Finally, the V-Ray stereoscopic system is explained and a 3D version of the final image is produced. The second case study is a short animation featuring a large array of effects and is a real demonstration of the power of V-Ray. Featuring a large scene with billions of polygons, two types of displacement, dirt mapping, fur, 3D volumetric clouds, lens effects, per frame GI lighting on moving objects, and motion blur, it really tests V-Ray to the limit and features extensive tips to optimize render times. Scenes like this are all too common in architectural visualization and it provides a good insight into how to get the most from V-Ray. The final case study is a little bit different. It makes an extensive use of V-Ray's real-time preview capabilities to set up a studio-style car shoot, showing a suitable method to control the look and placement of highlights and reflections, and also explaining the use of the new V-Ray car paint shader. We look at how to set up V-Ray to produce the super clean rendering necessary for this type of work, and show how to render the various passes necessary to produce a good final image. By the end of the course, you should be confident enough to tackle production work at any level using V-Ray.